In the lobby of the medical building, a man waits for the elevator. He's six feet tall, wears a black leather jacket, and a red bandana tied around his hand. The elevator door opens, revealing a young woman standing inside. She's slender, about five foot four inches tall, with long black hair, and she wears a blue raincoat. She holds the door open, and the man enters the elevator using a white mobility cane. The elevator door closes. The woman pulls an earbud out of her ear. What's what? Seven, please. The woman presses the button. The elevator winds, jerks, and stops abruptly. What? We've stopped? I didn't hear a thing. The doors aren't open. The woman looks at the console. It looks like one of the buttons is depressed. Tell it a joke. Ha ha. The woman starts pushing the other buttons. Where's Scott? Yeah, I pushed all the buttons, even the emergency button. Nothing. Let me take a look. She does a double take. The lights on the buttons were on until the elevator stopped. The man touches the console. The console isn't warm, but I smell burning. That's not good. That could be anything. It could be a circuit fire, and one of the buttons is depressed. I just said that. He puts his cane down. Do you happen to have a knife? No. Here, try this. She hands him a pen, and he starts working on the stuff button with it. What? You need to do it? No. I hear voices. Help! Help! I don't hear anything. They're very faint. Listen. He must have scared them away. <laughs> she paces. What, what if the cable snaps? Well, if that happens, we'll plummet. And at that last moment, before we hit bottom, we're going to need to jump. <laughs> oh my god. I feel claustrophobic. I can't breathe. Don't worry. Sit down. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. She sits on the floor and breathes. Not too many. We might run out of oxygen. <laughs> ha ha. Oh, I should have taken the stairs. I always take the stairs. That might have been good for me. He sits down beside her. These elevators have many cables. And even if all the wires snap and the brakes fail, the air pressure in the shaft will create a cushion at the bottom if you fall. <sighs> Thank God. How long have you been blind? Kind of a personal question. <laughs> oh. My whole life. That's so sad. Only to be decided. <laughs> it, it must be tough. Being blind, isn't everything more challenging? He stands up. What's the matter with you? Are you standing on your head? What? When people talk like that, I assume they're talking out the wrong end. <laughs> he goes back to fiddling at the console with her pen. She picks up his cane. What do you call this thing? My stick. <laughs> it's called a mobility cane, and normally you don't touch a blind person's cane unless they give you permission. What are these plastic thingies? Brackets. They protect the joints of my fingers. And the rotating red tip? A rotating red tip? <laughs> Put it down now, please. Oh, okay. Sorry. She puts the cane down. Why red? Because I like red. You can see red? Describe red to me. When you're speaking to a sighted person, explain red. Stop? Candy? Uh, I, I don't know, it's just red. But how do you know it's red? Red is heat, it is fire, it is passion, it is anger and rage. It is also the color of blood. And blood is life. So red is life and death. 
That's why I like red. What about blue? Can you describe blue? How about you tell me? I don't know. Would you have any imagination? I guess not. He stops fiddling on the console and looks into space. I see many things with my mind's eye. Many wonderful and terrible things. Don't you ever lie down and imagine? Don't you ever sit on a rock on the border, on, on the border of a meadow where the sun shines down on the grass and the meadow is bordered with pines and you hear birds in those pines? Maybe you see a white butterfly fluttering by or you hear a black bee buzzing nearby and you can see all the dry grass. Maybe you're sitting on a log at the ocean shore, listening to the ebb and flow of the water, children playing in the sand. He puts his hand in front of her eyes, and she closes them. You hear a lone seagull, and off in the distance, the low barn of a crater as it passes. Or perhaps you're sitting on the edge of one of the blue craters, gazing at the earth and its greens and blues and the clouds that surround it. And you turn to the vastness of space and all it has to offer. Cool. She opens her eyes. It's just being human. Just being me. He goes back to work on the console with the pen. The elevator lights flicker and go out. Oh no. The lights went out. Lights on, lights off, I'm easy. I like the lights on. What did you do? Nothing. Although now it feels like we're in the twilight zone. I don't feel comfortable in the dark. You're being too sighted. You're not helping. You can grab my stick. <laughs> Where is it? Right here. I, I, I can't find it. It's big enough. That's the tip. I've got the shaft. Hold it firmly and try to relax. Okay. Focus on the stick. Okay. Let it ground you. Okay. Say something. So, you come here often? Kind of a personal question? Ha uh ha. -huh. I see a, a head talk. You're brave to admit that you're seeing a shrink. That's not a very nice word. It must be tough, being depressed. Isn't everything more challenging? All right, all right. Depression must be embarrassing. Shut up. I'm just working through some stuff. I'm not even sure I need her. What are you here for? Now we're getting too friendly. I share. Just a test today. Sorry if I was rude or annoying. No need. The lights flicker back on. They're both holding on to the cane. The lights are back on. She lets go of the cane. Can I tell you something? Could I stop you? <laughs> I like your style. You don't know anything about my style. I didn't mean anything by it. You want to know my style? Take the cake. She takes it. Now close your eyes. I have a trick for you. I want you to look at the room from the cane's perspective. Are you trying to hypnotize me? You're going to put me in a trance, make me cluck like a chicken, or steal my wallet? Can you cluck like a chicken? No. You're too chicken to cluck like a chicken? No. The man starts flapping his arms like a chicken and dancing around him. You're too chicken to cluck like a chicken? Or maybe you're too chicken to be good. Okay. I'll try. Close your eyes. 
and see the room from the cave's perspective. So, I am the cane? In a sense. You notice when you do this, you are in the present moment. Huh. I, I can see the room. Are you in the past, present, or future? I guess the present. Concentrate. Think you're not thinking of anything else. For the cane, it is always right now. Oh, I get it. Now go around the room with your eyes closed. Try not to bash your head. When you do this, you'll better understand your environment. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Good trick. She bashes him with a stick. Ouch. Sorry. She bangs into the console. Ouch! The elevator starts moving. We're moving. Yay! She embraces him in an awkward hug and spins him around. What did you do? I didn't do anything. He breaks her embrace. Can I have my cane back? She hands him the cane. Back. What a relief. He points the pen at her. Now pluck like a chicken or give me your wallet. <laughs> Very funny. I'm not joking. The clock or the wallet. Luck? It's a start. Here. He hands her the pen. Yes. Thanks. You scared me for a second. The elevator door opens. What's the matter with you? It's a pen. A blue pen. The man mounts his mobility cane like a horse and rides out. <laughs> the woman holds up the blue pen and closes her eyes.